I've, I've really enjoyed watching everyone else's prescription speeches and felt I really wanted to do one and it's uh, something very close to my heart and I actually need your help and I think by educating you might be able to help me. Um, so, just to give you some t statistics, if I can get the words out, in the UK, because we're going to be talking about, believe it or not, electric cars. Now, what that has to do with ferrets, I will get to by the end of this. However, in the UK, we were selling, on average, electric cars for 500 a month in 2014. In 2017, that went up to 4,000 a month. And actually, by the end of this year, it's going to be 6,000 a month. So that's a lot of electric cars are now rolling out into the streets of our lovely island that we live on. Um, and I like to do my part for the environment and us purchasing an electric car was one of the things that we wanted to do in protecting the environment and helping to bring down the emissions outside. But also just to see, you know, what could happen with these electric cars and how good are they? And they are really good. We're actually on our second electric car by now. So, I'll explain why in a moment. Um, so, who here owns an electric car? No, just me. Okay. Who here owns a car that you have to put either diesel or petrol into it? Be hand up, please. Thank you very much. Okay. Who in the room are the team of people that maybe, and this used to be me, you'd let your petrol get right to the bottom in red and you'd just see how far those fumes would get before you went to a petrol station? Who, who's in that camp? Yes. Okay, a lot of risk takers in the room like that. Who's Who's like half a tank and you're thinking, I need to fill up my car? <laughs> There's a couple in here too. Okay, great, thank you. It's nice to know who we've got in the room, who we're talking to here. So, on your average trip to work, and I can say tonight, just come in here, I passed two petrol stations just coming from up the road near Ashton Keynes. And actually in the center of Swindon, there's about 19 petrol stations and each of those probably have about eight to 10 pumps. That's a lot of pumps for everybody to fill their cars up. In fact, there's over 100,000 petrol pumps in the whole of the UK. Now this is a really important part here that I'm gonna share with you because compared to electric charging points, that's quite a lot. Now I'm gonna explain different types of electric cars and explain to you why we've ended up with our second electric car. So there are hybrid vehicles. Now if you've ever traveled to London or any other major city, you'll see them driving around, all those Uber drivers in Prius. That's your hybrid car. Now they're known because their short range will use their electricity and then they'll switch over to their fuel so they're more economical. So they're probably getting about 70 miles per gallon. But those battery powered miles are only about 22 miles, so not very far, and they can always drive to the nearest petrol station to fill up. You then have an electric car with what I like to call as a little putt putt. So this is my first car. This was my BMW i3 and it was a fully electric car and I could get 86 miles out of that electric car on a full charge as long as the weather wasn't blowing the wrong way and it was nice ready temperature for the battery. However, at 86 miles what happened was a little tiny engine kicked in and it went, oh, I'll get you to the petrol station, don't worry, we'll get you to the next pump or the next plug. And so this little tiny little lawnmower engine that was in the back of this BMW i3 and you laugh it was actually a two-cylinder 600cc engine running this little BMW i3 would take me obviously being the one that would always go to red and see how far I could push my battery to the next petrol station and then I could fill up and put my eight pound in there and that was it full and then drive to the next petrol station so if I had a long journey that was what I had to do each time I actually discovered as I was driving backwards and forwards to London that 86 miles just wasn't enough. And so I needed to get a bigger car. So the one we have now is a full electric, a top end, perfect day, no wind blowing. We'll get 315 miles range out of that engine, that battery powered engine without having to go to a petrol station, which is fantastic because you can get to most places. However, there are times when you're going to need a plug. Now, if you imagine with your phones, it's pretty much just like our mobile phones. Each phone or type has a different kind of plug socket, especially Apple. We like to do that where it's Apple, have a certain plug, and then you have your Android phones. They have a certain plug and you can't cross the two over. Well, all the makers of electric cars are now designing their cars with various different types of plugs. So I've brought a plug adapter along for you. So the car I have is a Tesla. 
and our plugs and our charging stations all fit perfectly into our own make and a few others, um, we all use the same kind of plug, which is like this end. However, there are certain makers out there like Volkswagen, all our competitors now, that are using this type of plug. Plug, not a plug, we don't put, <laughs> don't put plugs put into plugs a plug. <laughs> That'd be a bit painful. Uh, so we have to buy an adapter, and this is what an adapter looks like for your information. It's quite heavy, um, but it does enable us to be able to charge in more charging stations. However, there aren't that many around, um, so you want to have as many options as possible. So let me just explain to you how the cars actually charge as well. Because at home, I can actually plug my car into a 3-pin plug. However, it would take me approximately 24 to 33 hours to charge my battery. Um, it would give me about nine miles an hour, so it's really, really slow. We've also got fitted at home a seven kilowatt big battery charging thing that plugs into the wall with the big Tesla shining lights on it. Now that takes me about eight to 10 hours to charge my car fully. So we plug it in overnight and there you go, your car's fully charged by the morning. And then across the country, there are different types of charging stations that are being built. You'll probably, has anyone seen any going up recently? Anywhere? No, see, oh, you see. There's a Tesla one at uh, Holmville. At where? Uh, at the Holmville, Holmville, Holmville place. There it is. <laughs> oh, I don't know about this one. Oh, yes. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so that like, nobody's really seen them. And they are like few and far between. Um, but there's a few in shopping centres and Tesco have just partnered up with Volkswagen and they are also now rolling out brand new charging stations in their car parks. Now they'll pump out a massive 22 kilowatt which will take about five to seven hours to charge your car and um, you'll get about 43 miles an hour. So if you do a shop you probably get about 60 minutes you're probably going to get about 40 miles worth of uh, charge. Um, now Tesla have their own charging points that are very unique to them and you have to have a little chip in your little car and it will only work for Tesla. Now ours are called superchargers and it's 150 kilowatts and it will take us about half an hour to get a full charge on it. However, you don't want to sit in the car while it's happening because it's literally very tingly when you're sitting in there for some strange reason. <laughs> now, the reason why I need your help is because as I said, charging stations are few and far between. Now this is our dream here. This is like empty charging spots so that when my car, as my battery percentage is dropped, I can drive in and plug my car in straight away. However, as I discovered recently, when I went to Tesco's to charge my car desperately, this car, I have slides up right now. Can you see what car that is there? Yes, yeah, so that's a five series BMW from about 1992, back then where batteries weren't invented for cars. Parking in the car parking space that's very conveniently located near the front of the store. Now that's not the first time. We as battery card drivers find this happening all over the UK where people see it and just drive in and park up. However, that is the equivalent to us as us driving up to a petrol station, parking in front of a pump, shutting the door and walking away while there's a queue of people waiting. So I really need your help. If you ever, ever see somebody parking in a Tesla or a battery powered parking place where it says electric vehicles only, can you just let them know that that's stopping somebody from being able to charge their car? Because that's how we fill up our cars but people still see it as a convenient place to park. And so I've created these little things here and it says, great parking. I assume you were blindfolded or a, cra or a crazed ferret was chewing your private parts, hence not spotting all of the signs above your head. <laughs> You've just taken up an electric vehicle charging point and from what I can see, you have nothing to charge. That's technically the same as an owner of an electric vehicle parking at a fuel pump and walking off to shop. As you can imagine, that would be quite annoying. This happens so often that over in Norway, they actually all parked in a petrol station one time just to prove a point and get a photograph of it. So please help. And I hope I've educated you on how valuable those parking spaces are.